Hello and welcome to the presentation of Vivo's Year End Report 2021. I start with some figures. 315, as in 315 million in new leases signed during 2021. 115, it's uh, 150 million is the net letting for the full year. 67, as in 67 million in net letting in Q4. And 50, that's our 50 billion property value. 4.8, it's 4.8% as the increase in rental income in like for like portfolio. And finally, 2.8 is 2.8 billion as the value of ongoing projects. All records in a historical perspective, but of course, just the starting position for the future. And now we'll go back to the standard presentation mode, a summary of Q4 2021. Even if the positive trends in the middle of the autumn was a bit slowed down by restrictions in the end of the year, we had a very strong finish of 2021. All time high quarterly operating cash flow, all time high new leases and net letting, both quarterly and for the full year. Cash flow and earning is our focus and the strong cash flow also creates opportunities. We continue to start projects when the timing and location is right. And we now have an all time high project portfolio, 2.8 billion. And rental income increased by 0.8% in the like for like portfolio, a good temperature measurement of increasing rent levels. Results for the full 12 month period 2021 rental income amounts to 3 billion 60 million still affected by our divestment in Malmö in December 2020, but also from the one of compensation from Danske Bank termination in Q3. The operating surplus summarized to 2 billion 195 million and income from property management uh, amounts to 1 billion 815 million. The result for the period amounts to 3 billion 348 million, which corresponds to 21.78 Swedish Krona per share, and EPRA NRV increased by 17% to 172.65. A comparison between rental income 2020 and 2021, divestment minus 82 million, COVID discounts 17 million less 2021, a better year for many tenants overall, Currency effects minus 19 million. 2020 was a poor year for service income and 2021 was 5 million worse. Vacancy 51 million higher. An extra income from early termination from Danske Bank adds on 69 million. And other increase uh, in higher rent and new leases plus 57 million. Still affected by the divestment in comparison, but picking up in higher rents and when new projects are completed. Future positive effects will come from higher service income, such as the Danish cantinas now when the COVID restriction ends. And of course, when we sign new leases and vacancy decrease, the most important factor. Here are some of our new tenants that we have signed during 2021. Some large ones like Trighansa, Oatly and Visma that are really positive for our project volume. Länsförsäkringar filling up the Dion area and Lund together with the Institute for Human Rights. But also smaller uh, but important tenants like Brödernas at Helsingborg Central Station giving other tenants the right service. Record levels on new leases 350 million for the full year and 150 million net letting. Positive net letting in every quarter during COVID is good. Breaking records and reaching for new levels is a signal that the market is strong. We have built a really strong organization, working hard, being close to our customers, and that pays off. Some large leases are a part of these figures, but it's significant that the large number of smaller tenants is what makes the business enduring and strong. We have new leases of 186 million, no, 186,000 square meters and termination of 168,000. That's a difference of 18,000, but a positive value of 150 million. 
So the signals of increased rent levels and higher quality in the portfolio are definitely there. Here we have the net letting in a historical perspective, positive figures for the last 27 quarters. Letting in light blue to and termination in dark. The dark gray line is the net letting. The number of new leases during the year is 564. Still no guarantee that we will never be below zero, but I see many positive signals further on. A list of our 10 largest tenants in alphabetic order. They contribute with 21% of our rental income. Also, the rental income from public tenants continue to be high, 24%. And as usually, I keep mentioning that it's the wide diversity across many sectors in our region that is the strength that brings stability over time. Rental value uh, is now 3,472 million per year and rental income 3,128 million. That's plus 6.2% and our project portfolio will keep that growing. And looking at the like for like figures, we can see that rental value is up 4% and rental income is up 4.8%. A high level and again beating our ambition to exceed index by at least a percentage point. The vacancy will decrease further when our new tenants move in. And a summary of our office portfolio. The market value is 40 billion, 749 million, and overall the occupancy rate is 92%. It's 94% in Malmö, 89 in Helsingborg, 91 and improving in Lund, and 94 in Copenhagen. And as I said, this figure will continue to improve when our new tenants move in. There might be a slightly lower value in Q1 due to the period for refurbishment in some of the objects, but improving well during 2022. The operating surplus from offices summarized to 1,996 million Swedish krona and a running yield at 4.9%. And we go to logistic and production. Uh, the demand continues and here the occupancy rate is now at some kind of top level in Malmö, 99%, 90% in Helsingborg and 93% occupancy rate as a whole. With a running yield at 6.3% and a total value of 6,445 million. And the demand continues to be strong throughout this sector in all our cities. For the entire property stock, the occupancy rate is 92% excluding project and land, and the operating surplus 2,401 million gives a running yield of 5.1%, excluding project and land. Total value of the portfolio is 50,333 million Swedish krona. Changes in market value of our properties. We started the year with 46 billion. Uh, 72 million in the accordance with our external valuation, which once a year values 100% of the stock at the same time. We have made acquisitions for 429 million, invested 1,290 million, divested 3 million, just a small piece of land at Vietet in Lund. We have changes in valuation of 2,153 million. And the increase of value in Q4 comes approximately 50% from lower yields, 30% from new leases and increased rents, and 20% from project development. Together with currently translation of 163 million, that summarize a property value of 50 billion 33 million. And the value of the portfolio has developed, as you can see on this slide, since 2004. Five, a bit flat last year due to the large divestment, but now back on track, seeking for further transaction possibilities though. The right product is of great importance, but also the right price, of course. The last one trickier than ever to figure out, I would say. A catalogue of our value and properties in our four cities. 42% of the value is in Malmö, 24 in Helsingborg, 17 in Lund and 18% in Copenhagen. These cities belong to the same region. They are connected, but they also have differences so that they 
in their own special way contribute to the whole. Universities and good opportunities for good housing and living environments are common opportunities in all cities. Our total business model includes profit from projects and income from property management. For 2021, these results amount to 379 million Swedish krona and 1 billion 815 million respectively. The business model since 2005 have created 4.5 billion as profit from projects and 15.8 billion from property management. In total, 20.3 billion, of which 7 billion have been distributed as dividend. The profit from projects varies over time in line with uh, the time schedule for our projects and when they are filled with tenants. That's a very good part of our operation. And what about the office? Do we have any news? Uh, will the office be remastered in any way? Uh, we have done a sequel of our artificial intelligence report produced a year ago, now measuring people's change in behavior and what they maybe a little more subconsciously are asking for. The conclusion is that the expectation of the office increase. Employees will ask for flexibility, balance in life, and that will put up new demands on leadership and organization but also new demands on our product. We love seeing people again, and we also love when people talk about our business. And finally, some real figures. Over to you, Arvid. Thank you very much, Ulrika. Good morning, everybody. Uh, moving to uh, the next slide, the income statement for Q4. Uh, we recorded rental income of 770 million during the quarter. Uh, we had a positive impact included in those numbers uh, coming partly from a, a, a 5 million COVID reserve, which has been reversed during the quarter. Uh, and we also had a, a reserve relating to the one-off payment from Danske Bank regarding Avian de Strive, uh, which were uh, a, a, an agreement we reached in Q3. Uh, and that reserve has also been reversed. So a, a total one-off effect of 10 million Swedish kroner affecting the quarter. Uh, one should also keep in mind looking at the 751 million kroner in re uh, rental income in Q4 2020, that during two months we had income from the divested properties as that divestment was effected on the 1st of December 2020. We had an operating surplus of 537 million Swedish kroner. Um, included in those numbers and, and, and in comparison with Q4 2020, we had uh, winter related costs of 5 million more than we had the corresponding quarter a year previously. We had income from property management amounting to 443 million. Um, a slightly, uh, slightly lower interest costs uh, than in the previous quarter. I will get back to that uh, in a few slides. Uh, with positive value changes of uh, almost 1.6 billion Swedish kroner in the quarter. Uh, as Enrika said, 100% of the properties have been valued by external appraisers as of year end. Uh, in, in, uh, in rough terms, you could say that about half of the value increase comes from uh, lower valuation yields. Um, about 30% from increased rents and, and, and lettings and about 20% from uh, profits from projects. Uh, with a positive uh, change in value of derivatives, uh, giving us all in all a profit for the period of 1,668,000,000. Uh, looking at the balance sheet, you can see that uh, during the year, property value has gone up by 3.9 uh, billion. Uh, at the same time, borrowings increased by 1.1 billion and equity was up by 2.5 billion. 
And looking at the change in, in equity, you should also, of course, bear in mind that during 2021, we paid a dividend of 800 million uh, or just above that. Um, it, it's not huge numbers, but I think it's interesting to note that, uh, as you've seen for a few quarters, <clears throat> we, we have derivatives both on the asset and the liability side of the balance sheet. And for the first time, the market value of our derivatives, <clears throat> excuse me, on uh, on net basis is uh, actually has a positive value of 31 million. Moving to the key figures, which the balance sheet translates into, uh, our equity assets ratio now stands at 42.9%. Uh, we have an LTV of 46.5%. Uh, and an interest cover ratio of 6.7 times. Uh, and these are, as I will show you in graphic form, actually the strongest uh, balance sheet numbers that we've been able to, to show uh, also in a historic perspective. Uh, the EPRA NRV, as Ulrika related to, has increased by 17% to 172.65 kroner per share. Uh, on the back of a strong balance sheets and on the back of a strong uh, cash flow generation uh, during the year, the board proposes a dividend of six kroner per share, um, and that is up 14% thus last year, and thereby continues the, uh, uh, the trend of continuously being able to increase our dividend now for the 16th consecutive year. And the EPRA uh, net asset value or EPRA NRV, uh, in a historic pers historical perspective, you can see on, on the slide in front of you, um, the increase during the year was 17% and measured from 2009, adjusted for dividends, the average annual growth has actually been exactly 17%. Uh, so we think that is a, a strong track record, which we are happy to continue. Looking at the financial ratios in a, a five-year historical perspective, you can see a gradual increase in the equity assets ratio, a gradual decrease, especially over the past two to three years of the LTV. Um, and a very strong interest cover ratio, not least since year end uh, 2018, um, where, where interest cover, uh, the interest cover ratio went up to about six times, and we've been above that since. And even more important, looking at our financial stability than, than looking at the LTV, we think it's it's uh, important to, to look at the, our net debt in relation to EBITDA. Uh, during the year, we strengthened this ratio further, and it now stands at 10.7 times. Our financing sources as of end December uh, are, are roughly the same as they have been over the past year. Uh, roughly half of our external financing comes from bank loans. Uh, a bit over a third from the Danish uh, mortgage loan system and, and a bit under 20% from the bond market, uh, both via our own MTN program and via uh, SFF, Svensk Fastighetsfinansiering. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the structure of our loan portfolio you can see in detail on this slide. Uh, the fixed interest period now stands at 2.9 years and the average loan maturity at six years. Um, I think it's worth noting that the average interest rate at 1.27%, uh, we feel actually is a very competitive level in an industry comparison. Looking at the loan maturity and the fixed interest period in a five-year historical perspective, loan maturity has been very stable. Uh, the fixed interest period has come down slightly 
uh, and according to our, our financial policy, uh, is likely to remain around three years going forward. Uh, finally, uh, looking at available funds, uh, as you can see in this graph, we have during the pandemic period had uh, larger unutilized credit facilities uh, than we have had historically. Uh, and that has been, in our view, a good precaution in uncertain times. Uh, we have, though, consciously over the past couple of quarters, brought down unutilized credit facilities somewhat. Uh, so they now stand at, at uh, a bit over, or between two and a half and three billion Swedish kroner. And we feel that is a, a comfortable, situ comfortable situation to be in when it comes to seizing investment opportunities. So with that, I'll hand back the word to you, Ulrika. So oh, thank you. Uh, and just a few words on this sustainability team. Uh, since the last report, another five properties have been approved and classified as Miljöbyggnad i drift. All of the buildings certified from the older stock have reached the silver level, which is really good. We have also 2.3 megawatt solar cells installed by the end of 2021. And once again, I would like to mention the work we do with changing our cooling machines and the fluorocarbon gas that is the most common gas in cooling machines and we changed that into propane gas instead. We have by that in 2021 reduced risk of 1,200 tonne carbon dioxide emissions and that change will be sustainable over time. Now let's go to investments in progress. We have during 2021 invested 1 billion 290 million in ongoing projects and it remains 2 billion 299 to invest in already approved projects. So we have projects of for over 2.8 billion ongoing. Overall, the projects continue according to plan in a good way. Some smaller delays due to COVID, but nothing that will affect our customers. A quick review of our largest projects. The largest one up to now is Polpetten 5 in Hylia, a project that we call Kvartetten. We invest uh, 696 million Swedish krona and will get 16,000 square meter letable floor area at the highest certification standard with Miljöbyggnad Gold, Well, and uh, Null CO2, Zero Carbon Dioxide. Leases are signed with Trighansa for 12,000 square meters and together with Mind Park and Spill. Uh, this project is 85% pre let With no other vacancy in the area and Katetten almost fill up, it's time to start the next project in Hylia. It's Black Hornet 1 and the project that we call Vista, a large mobility hub with 400 parking spaces. Although the block is right beside the train station, parking is still an important sales factor. And on top of the mobility hub, there will be 16,600 square meters office and restaurant. And now we can start the whole project at the same time. An investment of 884 million. So now Pulpeta next door is only the second largest one. Completion Q1 2025, but the mobility hub will be ready earlier. And at Hindbygården 7, we're doing a project for the led to back optimization, a state of the art office at a good transport location in Malmö, completion in Q322. In Rappenander Dia 3 in Lund, we continue with this conversion project. We have signed several leases at top levels in Lund, over 3,000 kroner per square meter. Completion in Q422, and I know that the investment will be a bit over 140 million, uh, but still with a yield on cost at approximately 6%. This uh, investment will give us 5,800 modern square meters of modern offices. Uh, with this industrial touch right beside the central station. And since we have good discussions with possible tenants seeking for larger areas than we can offer at Rafnaderiet, we also have decided to start Posthost Hornet 1, Phase 2 in Lund, 9,900 square meters just beside the railway station. Uh, the investment is 448 million and completion in Q424. 
At Science Village, right beside um, the research facilities MAX4 and ESS, we have started our project space where Oatly will be the main tenant with the research and development team. They have options for the whole building and we have more building rights just beside this one. The food tech sector is of course interesting and uh, we will invest uh, 245 mil million and the building will be completed in Q3 23. In Helsingborg, we have started a multi-tenant logistic project at Huggen at 13. The building permission expects to be approved now this week, 17th. Uh, we build this project in two phases and first one will be completed in Q2 at 23. At Snorskogen 5, also in Helsingborg, we will build a facility for Doka, 2,200 square meters, investment 60 million and completion Q1 23. A large ongoing portfolio that's also mentioned. Let's mention something about the future investment. Uh, here we have uh, four possible projects in our three Swedish cities. Vietskapen 1 is new on this list, just beside Kunskapen 1 at Science Village area. And at the Dion, we can build approximately 16,000 square meters just beside the tram station. Uh, Police 7, its offices in the city center of Helsingborg, and Plåtföredlingen 15 and 18 is also in Helsingborg, and we can offer up to 22,000 square meters gross, gross floor area in logistics. A few other projects from the industrial and logistics segment, Rausgård 21 in Helsingborg, approximately 20,000 square meters. Grus Target 1 also in Helsingborg, also here approximately 20,000 square meters. Bilrutan 5 in Landskrona, 14,000 square meters right beside the highway. And in Sunnano in Malmö, where we have built for Region Council of Skåne and VHB, we can add on an extra 17,000 square meters logistic or production. The planning of Nyhamnen uh, in the city center of Malmö continues, but the larger zoning plans will delay due to infrastructure planning by the municipality. Uh, but we can continue our design and planning with ongoing zoning plans, for example, Smörkajen. Here we see an improved design for our 13,000 square meters. And the Kranen 15, uh, just at the entrance to Dockan area from Nyhamnen. The work with the zoning plan is about to be started. We will see new design here as well. And architectural competition will be a part of this process. Uh, Naboland 3 in Dockan, just a few hundred meters from Kranen 15. Here the planning permission is ready and we can submit a building permit application whenever we think the timing is right. 8,000 square meters. At Westerbro in Lund, the zoning planning is ongoing and we can develop approximately 70,000 square meters in this area. And something about Denmark at AB Industry 41, um, the area where Danske Bank uh, had this termination. And we can continue to develop this area for mixed use. Uh, um, we have a very large area here, very close to the new tram station, just at the uh, left on the build on the, the map, left Banan. And we can develop something like 100,000 square meters housing, school and workplaces here. In Hörkel, also in Copenhagen, the zoning plan is just approved and we can continue to develop the area for mixed use here as well. The offices are already built, but the increasing the density and combining offices with housing in this area will create an even more attractive area. We own part B to F in this picture. Uh, one of the buildings, uh, we are already developing a preschool for the municipality at the moment. And let's summarize Q4 once again, a very strong finish of 2021, all time high quarterly operating cash flow, all time high new leases and net letting both quarterly and for the full year, all time high project portfolio 2.8 billion and rental income increased with 4.8% in the like for like portfolio. And by that, we are open for questions.
Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you do wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. If you wish to withdraw your question, you may do so by pressing zero two to cancel. There will be a brief pause while questions are being registered. Our first question comes from Marcus Henriksson with ABG. Please go ahead. Good morning, Ulrika and Arvid. Um, first question regarding like for like rental income uh, here up 4.8%. Four, 4 um, do you have any one-offs or could you highlight significant drivers behind that figure? And have you already included the indexation for 22 in, in the analysis per property category you have in the report? Uh, yes, the indexation is, is included as the property table uh, reflects the situation as of 1st of January 2022. Uh, but but as, as Ulrika said in the presentation as well, we're, we're of course happy that we are able to beat index. Uh, and and, and our, our ambition to continues to be to beat index by at least a percentage point on, on this metric. But there's no extra one payoff in that uh, in such way. It's it's only the indexation and the normal hard work. Okay, perfect. But could you could you highlight uh, what, what drivers do we have if we if we look at uh, excluding the indexation and, and look at different geographies or or sub markets uh, or or logistics offices? Where where do we have the strongest contribution? You, you you don't have any any significant uh, difference in the development in in industrial and offices and 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 also the the geographic spread of the increase is is fairly even among our four cities. Okay, um, then you highlighted ten million here in, uh, in extraordinary items. We also have around four million in higher snow removal costs. Do we have any other? one-offs or figures affecting comparisons here going forward? I think we, we, we try to highlight what, what sticks out a bit. Um, so, uh, no, there's, there's nothing in addition to that, which I think, well, well we, we, we've tried to be specific both in the presentation in, in, in the revenue development slide uh, and, and, and also in the report, but, but no other uh, extraordinaries. Okay. Um, you also mentioned the service income from the Danish canteens. So what have you got from, from that during a normal year and what has been the impact roughly in 2020 and 2021? I think the, on, on the uh, operating surplus level in, in the uh, income statement, uh, the negative effect from the canteens has been between 10 and 15 million Swedish kroner in 2021 and slightly less in 2020. Okay, perfect. Uh, when, um, when also question. Working, we, we are really happy to uh, at, at least uh, even those, those figure out. That's clear. Uh, also regarding projects, uh, you, ha you have two large uh, project starts here. Um, do you think it's likely that, that you will have any other large or several small project starts in 2022? Uh, I think that we will continue to uh, add on projects. Um, as you can see in the, in the portfolio for the future, we have uh, some, of, some possibilities that we can start uh, quite quick. So, um, but it's hard to predict which one will go first and exactly when the timing is, uh, is there. But, but if you look uh, back in historical, we have been able to, uh, to find new projects all the time. So we will continue with that. Thank you. Last question, uh, looking at uh, the bilateral market, Danish mortgage system or, or the bond market. And, and what, what do you see right now? And, and do you expect financing costs to come up, up somewhat here in 2022, all else equal? What, what we're seeing currently is that uh, bank margins are stable or maybe moving slightly downwards. Um, 
the bond market, uh, as always, is, is much more volatile than the bank market or the Danish mortgage system market. Um, and and as, as everybody has seen, the, the, um, the, the bond market margins uh, have, have gone up over the past couple of years based on basically on, on geopolitical uncertainty. Um, I would expect bank financing uh, costs to, to be rather stable uh, during the year. Uh, the increase that we've seen in the 10 year interest rate swap, for example, has not yet been reflected in Stiber. Uh, Stiber has remained uh, very stable at, at just below zero. Um, everybody can, can, can listen to the Rix Bank as, as, as well as we can. And, and, but I don't expect Stiber and I don't think people expect Stiber to increase sharply uh, during the coming six to 12 months. Perfect. Thank you. Those were my questions. Thank you. Our next question comes from Niklas Vetteling with DMB. Please go ahead. Thank you and uh, good morning. Um, I got uh, two questions. Um, first, um, you have a long debt maturity while uh, the average interest rate maturity has fallen down a bit uh, during the year here. And uh, I believe about 50% of the debt is as a floating interest rate or uh, interest rate that matures uh, in 2022. Is that a level that you are comfortable with going forward as well? Uh, we, we are comfortable with the average uh, interest maturity and our financial policy basically at, at stipulates that a, a certain proportion measured in percent of the interest maturities shall fall due during uh, the coming one, two, three, four, five, and, 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 and so on years. Um, the, the, the policy has been, been formulated in that way rather than being formulated uh, in, the, in terms of an average uh, interest rate maturity measured in years, since, since that number can be, so, so, so to speak, manipulated by, by individual very long interest rate swaps. Uh, but we are comfortable with the financial policy that we follow. Okay, thank you. And um, my, my second question is, um, what's the key argument for, for the share split? Um, the share split has no real economic or fi financial effect, as, as we all know. Um, we have effected a share split on a number of occasions historically since we were spun off in, in, in 2005. Uh, for us, it's a, basically a, a signal that since the last share split, we have basically doubled the value of the company. Um, and uh, it, it sends our, our, a, a signal both externally and internally that, that we've actually accomplished something uh, which, which is not all bad. It's, it's actually pretty good to have been able to double the value. Um, so it, it, it's, it's more of a signal that, that uh, we, we've done something over the past few years. Last test bit, I believe, was in 2018. Okay, great. That's all my questions. Our next question comes from Erik Granström with Kanegi. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, I have a few questions as well. I think I'll start off with the project portfolio and your investment level. I believe you invested about 1.2 billion in 2021, which is about the same level as the year before. Um, could you say something about what you expect to invest uh, this year, given that your project portfolio is growing? Uh, yes, we have a few large projects uh, that are up in volume, and uh, uh, some of them just in the in the start. So. I expect us to be uh, above 1 billion uh, this year as well, uh, but not reaching the highest levels that we saw in 2019, uh, close to 1.7 uh, billion, but over 1 billion. 
Okay, uh, and uh, and also on on in terms of profits from the project, um, you I believe you stated it was three hundred and seventy nine million in twenty twenty one. Uh, you had a number of projects that were also completed. Uh, you have about 170 million in investments to be completed for 2022, and then you have more going on uh, the coming years. Should we expect the profits from from projects will be slightly lower in 22 because of fewer completions, or um, will you continue to report? Um, profits from these projects as you start to rent them out, even in sort of early to mid stages? Yes, we we uh, calculate them as uh, profits uh, along with the way when we do uh, um, sign leases. So we don't have okay, to. So, we so I, I think you should expect uh, the same the same level approximately. OK. Uh, and, and also, what what are your outlooks for potential acquisitions? You mentioned something about prices uh, being difficult to to sort of um, get your hands around. What uh, what do you see in terms of outlook there, and and what have you noticed in the market so far? Mm, I think that we now see some possibilities uh, on offices in uh, Sweden, which is interesting. But of course, uh, Denmark is always uh, of great interest. So we. We grow where we have possibilities, uh, but we are cautious both with the quality and location and, of course, uh, the price. Uh, okay, and then, and then also perhaps just to clarify, uh, do you believe that your vacancy will come down in 2022, all, all else being equal? Uh, it will come down. It might get a bit higher in Q1, but then uh, lower uh, uh, as further the uh, 22 comes, so uh, yes, lower. Okay, uh, and then also looking at the proposed dividend, uh, your your income from property management was more or less unchanged in 21 versus 2020. Uh, but despite that, the proposed dividend is 14% up. How? should we view that your balance sheet is rather strong? Is this an indication that you can't find any investment opportunities or uh, what's sort of the rationale for the high dividend in relation to the unchanged uh, income from property management? Uh, it, it basically relates to, uh, as, you, as you state yourself, that the balance sheet is, is stronger than ever. Uh, and we also feel that the cash flow generation capacity that we have continues to be strong. Um, and we have had over the years and, and still have the ambition uh, to be able to increase uh, the dividend uh, each and every year. Um, so against that backdrop, the uh, uh, board proposes the increase to six krona per share. Okay, so I believe the payout ratio then in, in the proposed dividend is somewhere around 50%, which I think is a little bit higher than historically for billboards. Is that a level that we should expect going forward as well? Or do you it, see uh, cash flow generation increasing and, and thus you can still hike the dividend, but, but still have a payout ratio that's slightly lower? Historically, the payout ratio has, in relation to the income from property management, has been between 40 and 50%. Um, <laughs> and, and with this proposal, it's at, at, at the higher end of, of, of that specter. Um, and and our, our ambition is, is to be able to uh, run the company in such a way that we can continue to increase dividends. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you very much. Those were my questions. Our next question comes from Staffan Bilon with Nordea. Please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, I have a couple of questions. Uh, starting off with one question on the net letting figure. Uh, is the Trihansa lease included in the Q4 net letting figure? Yes, it is. But it's, okay. um, it's a, a part of it, of course. But as I mentioned, uh, the large numbers is from the many um, leases that we have done. Okay, that is clear. Uh, 
And you started a new project in uh, Hyrlia, uh, Black Hornet. Uh, could you explain the, the rationale for, for starting this project on, on speculation? Uh, I would say that it's the same thing that we then we started Quartetan. We need uh, uh, something to put out in the market. Um, uh, we have almost no vacancy in the area, just uh, 2,000 square meters in Quartetan. Uh, and um, the production time is long. And of course, we need, I think it's a good thing that we can start with the uh, mobility hub because it's uh, also attractive for Quartetan and the other objects that we have in the area. So uh, long production time and we know that the market is there. So, um, so then it's the right time to start. Okay, thank you. That's clear. Um, what, what kind of... Uh... The development profit margin do you expect to achieve in these projects in in Hyrlia, both for Perpetan and, and Black Por and Black Hornet, if you could specify that. We can put it this way: that uh, we expect us to have um, a yield on cost at approximately six percent. Okay. And uh, how how does the rent level uh, stands for a new produ new produced office in in Hyrlia? Uh, at good levels, uh, reaching um, a, a, a good increasement, uh, I would say. So tenants are willing to pay for the right product at, in the right location, and this is a good spot to be. And uh, so. So it is like top brands in Malmö in Hyrlia? Yes. yes. Um, and finally, I have a, a question regarding uh, yield compression. You mentioned that uh, one one third of the uh, value uplift comes from from yield compression. Could you specify how many basis points that is, and in in, in which segments? Uh, I would not like to, to, to specify the the number of, of points, uh, but uh, to correct you slightly. Uh, around half of the value increases, both in Q4 and for, for the full year, come from, from valuation yield compression. We've seen a larger yield compression in the uh, industrial logistics uh, segment than we have in the office segment. Okay, uh, great. Thank you. Those were my questions. As a reminder, if you do wish to ask a question, please press zero one on your telephone keypad. Our next question comes from Anton Villian with Bloomberg News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning. Um, you write in the report that uh, inflation may impact the property transaction market. Um, what kind of impact? Well, the, uh, if you look at inflation and the valuation of properties, you basically say that an, an, an increase in, in inflation uh, will feed through to increased rental income uh, since uh, most of our, our rental contracts are linked to, to uh, consumer price index on, on an annual basis. Um, so, so with, with a higher rental income, you also get increased value uh, of, of the properties. And may this uh, like slow down the activity, you think, or what kind of impact could it have on the actual activity? Uh, you mean the activity in the, in the transaction market? Yeah, because you say the red hot property transaction market may be impacted by uh, inflation. So I, I, is it... I think, I, I think uh, from our perspective, in, uh, a potential increase in inflation is uh, for, for our operations is not necessarily a bad thing, uh, as I related to, to the rental income effect. But increased inflation does create uh, increased uncertainty, uh, and that may uh, potentially have a negative impact on the transaction market, as, as uncertainty always is a drawback. Okay. Have you seen any such signs uh, already in the market? Has it slowed down from from last year? Well, what we've seen is actually a, a good 
good activity in the in 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 the transaction market and also uh, basically high high prices being being paid so a continuation from last year more or less or Yes, that's what I would describe it as. Okay. Uh, do you think it could impact your acquisition activity in 2022? Higher inflation? I don't think so. Uh, now we, it, it depends if they come new uh, numbers in any way, but uh, I hope that we can be, uh, find the right transactions uh, during 2022. Uh, and positive signals definitely from the office uh, side. All right. Okay, thanks for taking my questions. Thank you. At this time, we have no further questions. I will now hand back to the speakers for a final remark. Okay, then so we'd just like to thank you all for listening in and wish you a, a good day. So, thank you. Bye.